am Zilog. And Moto. It's a weird relationship. No, actually, I'm Dave, but this is the Zilog and Moto channel, which you probably knew before you clicked on this video. Or if not, well, you do now. And you should probably invest in some adult education reading classes. Seriously, it's only four syllables. Anyway, we're not here to discuss your reading comprehension skills, or lack thereof. We're here to discuss one of my shortcomings so far on this project. And that's a certain situation that I found myself in a few weeks ago when I had announced that I was going to review King of the Monsters 2 for the Genesis. Not realizing that the original King of the Monsters had been ported to the Genesis as well. And I'm trying to review series games in chronological order. I did end up obtaining a copy of King of the Monsters in the meantime and figured I'd wait a few weeks before slotting it back into the schedule. And now's the time! So, today on Zyogamoto, we're taking a look at Takara's conversion of the Neo Geo Classic? Yeah, you caught that question mark there in that last line. A little bit of background is probably in order. If you're not aware of what the Neo Geo is, and let's face it, if you weren't hanging out in the arcades in the early 90s, you may not be, the Neo Geo was the first console to be a true arcade in a box. What I mean by that is that the hardware in a Neo Geo console is more or less identical to the hardware in a Neo Geo arcade cabinet. The games and hardware are so similar that an arcade version of a Neo Geo game, referred to as the MVS version or multi-video system version, can be played on the Neo Geo console with just a slot converter. So if you're one of the few and proud to own a Neo Geo, and I do mean few, they didn't exactly sell a whole lot of them due to the price, you got to play arcade perfect titles at home, assuming you could afford the ridiculously expensive cartridges. For everyone else, if you want to play a Neo Geo based title in the early 90s, you would have to hope that it's someone would port the game over to either the Genesis or the Super Nintendo, knowing that you're going to lose some quality in the process. Takara licensed the rights from SNK to perform these conversions, with some of them coming out quite well and really capturing the feel of the original game, even at a reduced version that might be missing characters or levels. Some of the Takara games Takara converted were pretty famous, like Art of Fighting, Samurai Showdown, and Fatal Fury, but I thought it would be best to start with King of the Monsters, which arcade fans are probably familiar with, but more than likely has flown under the radar a bit for everyone else. The premise of the arcade version is that there are six giant monsters, or kaiju in Japanese, laying waste to six cities in Japan, fighting amongst themselves to determine the supreme monster. So how well did Takara do importing the game over from the arcades? And more importantly, is the game worth a damn to begin with? Well, let's take a closer look. And here we have the Genesis version of King of the Monsters. Pretty standard clamshell case, but the first one in a few weeks where, as you can see, the hang tab has been removed. I almost want to refer to these cases as circumcised versus uncircumcised based on whether the hang tab is intact or not. But that seems highly immature. Other than the missing hang tab, the actual outer cover of the clamshell is in good shape, with one small mark on the bottom of the middle right there. Um, I do need to clean it a bit, but it's nothing rubbing alcohol can't take care of. The inner cover is nice and colorful with some good looking art, and the name of the game actually somewhat understated down in the bottom right hand corner. I really like this cover. It feels like it could have easily been a movie poster back in the day for one of these Godzilla type movies. However, if you look closely, let's see, one kaiju, two kaiju, three, four, well, weren't there supposed to be six? Well, hang on to that for a second. Uh, the spine is especially nice looking. I really like the black background and the Takara logo the name and the Genesis uh, logo all go together great. This one really stands out on your shelf. I probably need to give this one a good detailing though. Definitely some still some sticker residue on here in places. Uh, as we flip over to the back, the uh, case switches to a weird forest background at the top and the bottom. I don't really know what's going on there. Um, Probably been best just to leave it black like the spine. And in another bit of WTF, look at the description of the game. If you can. Because it's super hard to read. Uh, for some reason, see right here. The, uh, they decided to go with a dark blue font on top of the black section. Unless you're 
in a well writ room, this is going to cause some serious eye strain. But the section below it in lighter blue looks fine, so I, I really don't understand why they didn't just you know use that lighter blue for the entire thing. Anyway, if we look closely at that lighter blue section, you'll see at the top where it mentions only having four cities instead of six. Uh, right here, eight stages and four battle cities. And um, in, in the decent looking screenshots below, the character selection, which is right here, only has uh, four characters, the ones from the front cover. I'm beginning to sense a bit of a trend here. As we open the case, if I can get it open there, you'll see the cartridge is in good shape except for a bit of a... Um, now, I was hoping this was sticker residue, but it's not. It does look like a little bit of the uh, sticker label has unfortunately ripped off there, but the rest of it's in good shape. Uh, and then the uh, manual, well, it's a... Uh, as you can see here, it's a little bit bent up. It's it's not quite so good as far as shape goes. Um, although I do like, you know, if you flip it over to the back, you get a nice ad for Takara's port of Fatal Fury. That's just, you know, of course that's the original SNK graphics there, but man, that looks, that, that's a great looking graphic. Uh, condition aside, uh, the manual has a completely unnecessary half-page prologue. Let me get to that. Right here. Explaining the background of the game? Yeah, I don't know, but this screams, hey, let's keep an intern busy for half an hour. Normally I like having the extra context in the manual for these games, but, well, I'm just going to read this real quick. On a planet in the near future... As our civilization advanced technologically and through the passage of time, the Earth experienced a gradual decline. Unexpectedly, this vast Earth came to a surprising halt. Suddenly, super monsters unimaginable to the human mind began to appear all over the world. This crazy universe gave birth to these quick transforming super creatures. Super monsters that would mercilessly destroy building after building. Super monsters that would ignore the frenzied panic of the people. No human military came close to their power. Sometime later, the monsters began to ask themselves, who is the strongest among us? And thus began the great power battle between the monsters. Eventually, the ultimate natural destruction site, the land of civilization, became the final battleground for the four victorious superpower monsters. Yikes. Okay, I changed my mind. This wasn't from an intern. They must have gotten someone that worked on the English translation from some of the old Toho Godzilla films for this. Wow. Continuing on, we get to the section where the four characters that actually made it into this port have short bios. And boy, there's a lot of wasted space here. I'm not sure why each of these needed its own page. Uh, and then we get to the character Rocky... And as you can see here, uh, Rocky is misspelled not once, not twice, but three times. Yeah, yeah, didn't, didn't really invest in the copy editors, did we, uh, Takara? Uh, the rest of the manual is pretty standard stuff with a nice two-page layout of the screen. Let me get to that. Right there. Kind of lays out everything for uh, the game. Uh, and then we get to the dangerous situations and three ways to escape them page. Let me get that. It's in the back. Here we go. So, hmm. Let's take a look. Let's see. Um, hitting any buddy button continuously. Hitting any button continuously. And hitting any button continuously. Uh-oh. The manual finishes with a high score page. Which I can't remember if I've ever seen on a Genesis title. It seems to be more of a Master System thing. This manual as a whole says a lot about the game. And 
Not in a good way. Let's get to that now and see if it's as bad as it seems. So let's get this part out of the way. King of the Monsters is not a direct port from the Neo Geo original. It's close, don't get me wrong. And it's not like Takara just kind of did their own thing with the title, like they would later on do with King of the Monsters 2, but we'll get to that in about another 100 episodes or so. However, due to limited resources on the home version, I'm guessing, rather than having six monsters battle it out in six different cities, we are instead limited to four monsters going at it in four cities. However, the structure of the game remains in that you have to fight the other three monsters and a doppelganger of yourself twice to complete the game and become the ultimate super monster. The four cities each change slightly for your first and second battle in them, and that's nice as you essentially have a morning battle and an evening battle in each one, where by some miracle all the buildings you and your opponent destroyed in the morning have been completely rebuilt. Yeah, that last bit's probably just nitpicking, but I think it would make more sense to do two tours of the four cities, rather than just staying in one and then going to the next and the next. Along with reducing the characters in the cities down to four, there are two other changes that probably should be noted. In the arcade version, each of the six cities had names that are real places. For whatever reason, in the home version, the only city that retained its name was the final city of Tokyo with all others being renamed to silly things like Megaport, Castle City, and Dragon City. No earthly idea why that occurred. Also, one final cut to the game was made, and this one actually makes a lot of sense from a limited resources argument, but in the arcade version, two players didn't necessarily have to fight with each other. They could team up to take down the computer together. It would have been nice to have a full co-op mode in this version, but I can see why it was cut, as while the Genesis main processors and sound are very similar to the Neo Geo's, the Neo Geo had a separate GPU that allowed it to do much more than the Genesis, and the Genesis would probably choke trying to animate three of the large characters at once, along with everything else in the background. Okay, so we've established that we're already dealing with a version of King of the Monsters that, at best, is two-thirds of the arcade version? Eh, close enough. So, how is that remaining two-thirds? Well, let's start out with the gameplay. SNK is known for their one-on-one -on -one fighting games, and if you didn't know anything about this title, you might assume that King of the Monsters is yet another one of those titles. However, it's not. A more accurate description for King of the Monsters is it's a pro wrestling game, but with giant monsters similar to SNK's three-count bout. On screen, you can only move so far up or down, and on the left or right, there are arbitrary power lines that you can't cross, or else your character will get shot. However, if you're on offense, you can Irish whip your opponent into the power lines, slash ropes, and have them come running back at you to set up an attack with a drop kick. I don't really understand how the power lines can both shock you and redirect momentum, so let's just move on. Each of the characters plays pretty much the same. And I don't mean they each have a punch, they each have a kick, etc. I mean their moves are almost identical, and there's no speed or power difference between any of them. Now to be clear, all of the grapples aren't the same graphically, but some characters do share the same grapples, and the effects of, the gra of all the grapples are exactly the same. So ultimately, it doesn't matter which of the characters you choose, as they all play exactly the same. Even Rue and Ken in Street Fighter 2 play slightly different, so this is a bit of a head-scratcher. However, I believe this is also how the arcade version was, so you can't really fault Takara for that. A lot of pro wrestling games from the time period involve copious amounts of button mashing, or hitting any button continuously. And as you may have guessed from my review of American Gladiators, I hate button mashing control schemes. They suck and cause unnecessary abuse of controllers, and if we're going to be really technical, eventually lead to repetitive stress injuries like carpal tunnel syndrome. I don't mind them so much when they're used temporarily in quick time events in modern games, but to have to just constantly beat the shit out of your controller to win a game? That's poor game design, and unfortunately King of the Monsters is full of it. Thankfully, Takara was wise enough to at least include a decent options screen before starting play, which allows you to control the difficulty level and how many continues you start out with. 
which means it's actually possible to beat the game without pounding your controller in the dust. There's also an option to control the length of the rounds, although for the life of me I don't know why this would ever be used, as either you or the computer will be pinned long before the default time limits hit. One small bit about the gameplay I will say in its favor was the decision to allow your character to power up over the course of the game. After you perform certain grapple attacks against your opponent, power points will be dropped onto the screen for you to pick up. Picking up just one power point will do nothing, but collecting ten will allow your character to level up, which doesn't enable any special moves, but does allow you to move slightly quicker and cause more damage from your attacks. This level up process can be twice and is cumulative, meaning that even if you have to continue during a fight, you still retain your power-ups until you reach the final fight. This does add a bit of strategy to the game, as it makes sense to beat up on weaker opponents at the beginning to try to earn more of these power points at the beginning, and allow you to be leveled up against more of the enemies. The graphics in the game are pretty decent, I would say, and somewhat faithful to the arcade original. One of the things that the Neo Geo and SNK were really known for is having incredibly detailed 2D animations, both for the characters and in the backgrounds. And of course the Genesis isn't powerful enough to fully match the Neo Geo's abilities. However, in this case, King of the Monsters is an earlier Neo Geo title, and if you watch the character animations in both the original and the Genesis versions, they're actually pretty close. As stated previously, the Genesis probably wouldn't have been able to pull that off had there been three monsters on screen, but two seems to work pretty well. The trade-off comes in two areas, a lack of colors and backgrounds that aren't quite as detailed. This isn't to say that the backgrounds in the four cities look bad. Actually, they look pretty decent, considering the lesser horsepower of the Genesis. And they look especially good at night, with buildings in the background having their lights turned on. Before you smash said building by stopping on it, of course. To me, the lack of colors is the bigger issue. Without doing some very odd things, the Genesis is limited to 64 colors on screen at once, far less than the Neo Geo's 4096. And one look at the Genesis version of King of the Monsters versus the Neo Geo version will show that difference in colors. Again, the Genesis version doesn't look bad, but it does pale in comparison to the original. The sound in the game... Well, here's where things took a wrong turn in the conversion process as it definitely appears that Takara prioritized graphics over sound. And for good reason, but it doesn't mean I'm just going to gloss over a piss poor soundtrack. I went back and listened to a bit of the Neo Geo version, and it doesn't exactly have a great soundtrack either, but it's certainly much better than whatever the Genesis ended up with. The music for each of the four levels sound pretty much the same. Hell, it might actually be the same background music for each level. I couldn't be bothered to really try and determine where the changes are, because it all sounds similar, with similar poor synths and similar annoying shrill horns. The sound effects are especially bad as well, with a lot of generic crashing explosions that sound especially rough. And I don't know what the hell the sound effect is for when you or your opponent touch the electrified borders. A, a laser beam, maybe? For something that happens often during each match, you'd think they'd at least port that sound effect properly from the original version, but nope. And the music theme that is played when you win a match is some weird minor keyed mess that doesn't sound celebratory at all. Granted, the original is in minor key as well, but at least it sounds like a proper dirge. All in all, I'm giving King of the Monsters 2 stars out of 5. I seriously debated giving the game only 1 star but it does support two players, and it is pretty fun to go around destroying the various cities and trying to backdrop giant monsters on top of arenas and skyscrapers. But if you're looking for a faithful adaption of the arcade version, look elsewhere. If Takara had managed to include the other two cities and monsters, I might could see someone even giving this three stars, just from a technological effort perspective. But to me, it's just a drudgery to play, and had me thanking my lucky stars that the controller I'm using right now has rapid fire mode for the buttons. And I strongly recommend that you stay away unless yours does too. Okay, that's it for King of the Monsters. Can't say I'll be revisiting this one anytime soon. Hopefully the next time we see a Neo Geo conversion here on Zilog and Moto, it'll be a better game. Tune in next week when I play and review a game from a genre that I've never touched in 30 years of gaming. 
and probably still wouldn't have had it not been for starting this channel and this collection. Turns out that genre has at least five games on the Genesis, so I need to start getting them on the schedule. And as a bonus, I get to try to explain to viewers in 2019 and forward what TNN stood for. But that's all for now. Remember, whatever you play, have fun, and be excellent to each other. Later.